Okay. Welcome. Pat, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? I can't. Okay. <laughs> it's like an old, old fashioned operation where it comes right, right down, right. right down to the wire uh, right. uh, with the text. That's what happens. You leave a, a, an SOS guy in charge of any kind of technology. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining, and thanks everyone uh, who's here attending. So I um, I see many familiar faces and some new faces. So pardon me if I go through some some background. I'm Andrew Kirsch. I spent uh, just under a. Uh, Decade as an intelligence officer with the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, otherwise known as CSIS. And uh, oh, can't, oh, can't hear. One sec. That's important. Let's try. I can hear you okay, though, Andrew. So I don't know if it's just you and I. Maybe we have to share the audio. Oh, other folks, uh, can other folks hear? Are we okay? Okay, okay. So it might not be on our side. Okay. Sure. So spent just taking a decade as an intelligence officer with uh, with CSIS and you know wrote a book about my experience. I was I was never here. Um, and you know, I'd like to do these uh, quarterly q and I get a lot of questions from uh, people who've read the book, some who haven't, interested in a career in national security. I want to know more. I know there's not a lot of information available about uh, what CSIS is and what it does and what it's like to work there. And one of the questions I get a lot is about the role of surveillance and what it's like to be a surveillance, how to become a surveillance. And, you know, I I had some experience with surveillance, but I thought it's it time to bring in uh, an expert. And so I am uh, very, very pleased to be joined by uh, Pat, who I'll let introduce uh, himself and, and some of his experience. And I have some questions that have been asked kind of in the past uh, of me about that role and I'm uh, the chat is open for others who who have questions that they would like to uh, to ask um, and yeah we'll, we'll talk about kind of the role of, of surveillance at, at CSIS and National Security. So Pat maybe I'll turn it over to you just to introduce yourself a little bit to, to the group. Sure thank you Andrew. Uh, I'm Pat D, uh, former colleague of uh, Andrew. Um, uh, as Andrew had mentioned I I was a surveillance for several years. I was with the service uh, for about 11 years. Um, I am no longer with the service. Um, I did surveillance for about uh, eight of those 11 years. I moved into uh, some data exploitation and online type activities. So I've kind of moved into the OSINT world, still in the Intel space, um, but I, I do have uh, a lot of experience with surveillance and uh, yeah, that's just a, a, a brief uh, catch up of, of, you know, my experience. Well, I think, and, and, and I know you know you, Pat, and what you're up to, but even that role of OSINT, uh, you know, we think of, sur of surveillance as just the guys in the cars following folks around, but it's gotten much more sophisticated. Um, the technology in place that we can leverage to track folks and, and then what we do with the information and how we understand it is, is probably another good question uh, down my list. But maybe I'll start with the easy, uh, an easy one is, how'd you get into it? Like what got you into the surveillance? Um, yeah, how did you, how'd you find it? How did you stumble across that as a career? That's a great question. <laughs> uh, I'm sure most people get that question that, that have been in this space. Um, mine's a bit of a unique story. I had some friends that took a security and surveillance course and um, I, I had the pleasure of joining them on a project they did in the evening uh, at, at an establishment one night. Uh, they had to do some interviewing and that kind of thing. And um, I, I, I was it was quick to I was quick to learn that their instructor was a former CSIS um, investigator. So that piqued my interest. I started to gain uh, you know a little bit of knowledge on what they did and how they did it. And I, I went home that night and, and I really started to to look into this and say, hey, you know this this sounds like a really interesting career path. I, you know, it's one of those things that you see movies about it. You you have a little bit of an idea of of what what it is, but you, you don't get that full picture. So I got a, a brief insight that night, and, and that kind of opened the door into. Uh, 
to me pursuing further w what the service was and what they did, their mandate and that kind of thing. And uh, I, I went ahead and I applied that night. And, uh, you know, as they say, the rest is history, but it all stemmed from that one interaction and, and meeting somebody that did it. So, yeah, that's that's kind of my story on how I got into it. Is there anything? So that's that's a quick. Um, uh, yeah, a, a quick kind of application. Is there. Anything you would let's say from what you knew, you had a little bit of experience. You know, the, is there anything else you wish you'd known before you went and and signed up? Uh, now having done the job, so the folks who folks like you who who maybe see the movies, or you were lucky enough to to sit in on a surveillance class in in university or college. What what else did you want to know or need to know, or what else would you have liked to know about the job that that you didn't see in that first? Uh, that kind of first instance. Absolutely. Well, um, I, I, had, I, was, I was fortunate enough to actually have a family member who had experience in surveillance. So that I should have, I should have caveated with that, yeah. but that was my background on what surveillance was. So I had an idea of what surveillance was aside from the service. So I had an idea of what the lifestyle was like. Can you talk um, about that? Like the, like, sure. like the lifestyle, it is a very unique lifestyle and, and and intelligence officers we have our own lifestyle which is you know people i always say you know people we go and talk to people well folks don't want to meet during the day sometimes they have jobs right they they don't want their family to know so you're going out for coffee at eight o'clock at night uh you know not being able to sleep because you're drinking a lot of coffee at night uh, knocking on doors in the day in the office writing reports out of the office knocking on doors and we have a real balance of how do you schedule your day how do you schedule your week um, for intelligence ops. So, so I'll do a background. Like I would try to think of my week and say, okay, when am I going to try to get people? Like when, if I'm going to go knock on a door, or talk to somebody, when am I going to want to talk to them? If I chat with them, when do I want to write the report? You, you quickly realize you never want to talk to someone or try to, to call them on a Friday because right. they, they get really worried and they're like, let's talk to, uh, tomorrow. I'm like, well, I don't really want to work this weekend. So what about next week? And now you've left somebody, you know, worrying about meeting with CSIS all weekend long. Right. So we, I, I had to be very deliberate about what my week looked like. And then when I was going to block time for report writing and being in the office, knowing that you can't always, you know, you knock on a door at two o'clock pre COVID people work. They're not always home. Um, so that has to be different from your experience. Like what, what is the lifestyle of a surveillance like? Absolutely. Um, it, it's a really unique job. <laughs> and I, I'd like to compare to other emergency services, if you will. Okay. Um, you know, the start of your shift is fairly defined. You have a, a defined start time, whether that's, you know, early in the morning, mid afternoon, wh whatever it may be to suit the needs of uh, your task that day at hand. However, the, the unique part of it is unlike a nine to five job, there is no certain end time that that job may go on for 15, 18, 24 hours. Sometimes it all depends on what the task is at hand. So going into it again, you have that start time, but not knowing where your day is going to go. That can, that's one of the challenges of the job is, is not knowing where the day is going to take you mentally and physically. Um, sure. you, you, you may start in one area and be somewhere totally different by the time, you know, your day ends. And it, it's hard to prepare for that. Um, it, it's one of those things where you, you, kind of, you kind of get conditioned for that and you learn as you go. It's not something I think you can train for. It's something that you kind of pick up as you learn the job and get experience and that kind of thing. It, it's got to be tough because some days you, you, you're sitting, like That's just right. sitting. And, and, I, and it's eight hours of sitting, right? That's right. And, and believe it or not, that can take a toll. It's, it's very hard menta mentally and physically. And unlike, again, I, I compared to a nine to five job, but it, it's simple things, right? The, the luxuries of, you know, having a washroom, knowing where a washroom is or, yeah. you know, having food accessible or having the ability to eat. If, if you're removing and don't get me wrong, when you're active, it, it's, you know, it, it's a really high high. It's really exciting. Um, but, but there's a cost that comes with that and that can be your health, your, you know, your, your simple pleasures, you know, having a snack, eating something, it, it's not necessarily easy to do when you're, when you're highly active. Some of the surveillance, I won't say all the surveillance were some of the most disciplined physically with like the gym routines, bringing their lunches, not like relying on, I hope we're near 
you know, a McDonald's for a drive through, like it was, you could see it, the guys who were in excellent, you know, there's, there's, there's the, some people have the view of the surveillance as kind of the doughy, you know, I, that's not always the case. We had some guys who were, uh, were specimens, um, back, <laughs> back in the day. I, I don't know if I'd call myself a specimen, but I, I would prepare, <laughs> you know, it, it was wise to prepare your, your lunches and that kind of thing as, as you yeah. see fit, because you just didn't know when you were going to get an opportunity to, to eat or even have the chance to consider eating. So within, within the job and I, you know, we don't want to give things away. Like the, the aim of this is not to, to, to give away national security secrets, but keep, even within the role of surveillance, there's different kind of jobs. I would, uh, jobs or roles, right. Yeah. Is like, how does that, uh, did you find there's people gravitate to one or the other? Like, for example, to be able to spot somebody out of a crowd to be like the, the kind of point person, I think is a whole unique skill set. Um, yeah. What are some of the other you could talk about? Like maybe it's duties or or kind of roles within a shift or a team. Yeah. So um, essentially, uh, you know, you're you're taking notes, you're doing that kind of thing. Um, those are those are skill sets that you have to enhance. I mean, some people have that natural ability. I think that's one of the big things about you know even pursuing this job. I think. To a certain degree, you have to have a natural ability, and that is that comes with observation, picking somebody it's, out. Observation, picking people out. It's, that's right, and and yeah. noticing things you know that other people don't. Like some of this stuff comes naturally. It's hard to learn, if you will. I mean, some some people just have it, and some people don't. You just have that ability to even recognition and and memory recall. Those are those are other factors that I think are are overlooked in this position that. Um, that are key. And, and when it comes to roles and responsibilities, I think when, when you really look at, you know, the, the skills, fundamentals, it's like skills better where that role and response, like that, 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 that callback is such a great skill that some people have. I, I almost look at it like the skills you need to do it. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's recalling and even recalling patterns and, and the way um, people move and, and things like that and re recognizing a gate and things like that, where people are walking and, again, picking them out in a crowd from a distance can be, can be a challenge. So it's, yeah, it's one of those things that you, it's hard to learn. It, yeah, it's gotta be, uh, and, and you work, it's, I always found, and maybe with this, I didn't mean to cut you off on the roles, but I always found the neat thing about surveillance is a team aspect to it. We were often, I, I occasionally worked with a, a partner, um, occasionally we had a team support like i had a boss that i could ask questions i had other people on my desk that i could bounce ideas off of like hey i'm going to talk to somebody this is what i'm thinking is my pretext or my approach but you are such a team sport that's it's it is the thing that movies get wrong i always say that that james bond can can pick someone out at an airport and follow them to their hotel all by himself is the greatest like myth that the, that they perpetuate in these movies. Like, what's it like that being a part of that the team atmosphere? Team is absolutely paramount. Uh, you have to be a, a fully committed team player uh, when it comes down to it. I mean, your team is everything. It, it none of these jobs, none of the nothing in the service is done individually, um, and, and surveillance is 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 especially that. Um, you rely on one another. Um, I, again, when you kind of, when we discuss skill sets and, and things like that, and another thing is being able to communicate well with one another, because you, you rely on what people are communicating to you. If, if you aren't in a position where you're seeing what's happening, you have to understand what's happening with what somebody else is saying to you and you are dependent on their words. So that, that again, is that something else that is, uh, I, it, it's it's a team and a family, so that's kind of the unique thing about <laughs> the service. And, and I know you know that, but you know, for everybody else, it's one of those things where it, we're all one. It it's really true. I always loved the camaraderie of it when I got to do some I got to do some ride alongs and occasionally, you know, got some of my some of my uh, the interviews and, and special operations were supported by surveillance. You get that good natured the good natured ribbing, uh, <laughs> that, you know, that that is. Um, Funny, it's funny the communication. On my first uh, uh, ride along, when I first got there, um, the guy we were, was on the subway, and I had no like 
bone or comp. So the cars above ground are, are, are shooting after and like people are on the subway trying to follow and everyone's moving quickly. And at one point I turned to the guy I was kind of working with. I said, well, what happens if I, if I like, you know, get separated from you guys, you just go home. I, mean, I was just a liability. I was in no way, I had no way to communicate. I was like, come pick me up, you know, at the, at the stop. He was like, if you don't keep up, go home. We got a job to do here. And it's such a coordinated um, group, move, like all the movements, who's doing what. I was always very uh, kind of impressed by that. That's, I think they, the thing the movies get wrong for the most part is that you can do it with one or two people. That's right. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it is a team effort and there's a lot of moving pieces. So yeah, what, so your, your, your day and your week, like it can't be every day. You have, uh, yeah, you're, you're, you have blocks, right? It's like long designated blocks where your team is on and then you have to have some turnovers. Like that's kind of how it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like, so our schedule, it was, it was pretty structured in the, in the sense of you would do, um, you know, your days, there would be some evenings. Just, yeah, just in terms of lifestyle, a lot of people ask kind of lifestyle questions. Uh, yeah. You know, I have a family. I got a family. Can I be a surveillance? I got, you know, I, um, I'm a little older. How How is, you know, I'm worried about the health and stuff like that, physicality of it. I think people are wondering if that's a part of it, a part of the, of the job or the schedule is a challenge in that respect. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, in terms of a family, it, it's it can be extremely stressful on a family life. Uh, again, as we talked about, you know, the start and end of a day was very uncertain. Um, you could say, I'm going to be home at dinner and, and you may not be, you may have obligations that you have to commit to and, and you're, yeah. you're not home until later. Um, and, and the same goes with your body, your health. Um, it, it, not having that structure makes it extremely difficult. So it does take a toll, uh, again, mentally and physically on you. That's gotta be really tough. Cause you really don't know every day. Like if you're, if you're stuck out, in the middle of nowhere, even if, even if your shift ends, um, but you're just way far away from home. How, That's right. How, how is it like, well, I'm not sure the noise, how is it like uh, navigating traffic? You're, you're in the cities. Like what, <laughs> is that just, is that, uh, it probably gotten worse since, since we've left, but what's it like getting around? Like you're still trying to follow people around in a city. Is that, To be honest, that is one of the largest challenges, uh, you know, as a surveillance is, is those external factors. You, you have a job to do, and, and that's hard enough to, to ensure that you're doing the best job you can, witnessing everything that you need to see. Uh, factor in traffic and these other things, um, you know, we would use different tradecraft and techniques to kind of subvert that. But for me, one of the biggest challenges is, you know, sometimes getting from A to B, it could be very time consuming. And again, it's another thing that it, it does take a toll on you uh, physically, you know, from, from a job standpoint, sometimes your commute is uh, twice as long as it normally would be. And, and how do you guys work with the other, uh, uh, I mean, I, from my perspective, you know, we would have an investigation. So the intelligence officers, how it all kind of fits together. And the intelligence officers often are running an investigation and they have a subject of investigation that has reached a threshold of, of that investigation where uh, it is deemed that, you know, so they might need surveillance. A lot of people think we just do, we don't just do things to do them. You know, there has to be a rationale or a reason behind deploying assets or resources in an investigation. And surveillance is one of those things where it's okay. Well, what are, what are people doing, and who are they meeting with? What are the activities of the subject? If there are gaps from our understanding, you know, that's where that's where this comes in. How and and so we kind of task. How is it from your side? Because because you don't know, or uh, these aren't your necessary subjects. Like, what's it like to work with with the awful people like me, who just say, "Hey, here's a guy. Can you can you let me know what's going on?" Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's interesting. We, you know, uh, we would meet with people like yourself who would, who would give us a, a brief and, and give us a knowledge update on, on everything we needed to know to begin our task. And it's interesting to see the difference between the information provided and then what you see and witness in real life, because they are two really real di different things. Like they, they, you know, 
at the end of the day, you, you, your people are, the people you're working, they're human. So there, there's that human element to it that, that you don't think about necessarily when you're hearing the initial information from, from the investigator like yourself. Um, so it, it is interesting to decipher those differences and, and also to see, um, you know, what comes about and what, what activities may take place based on, you know, what you've learned and, and what you witness. Those can sometimes be two very different things as well. And again, sometimes the purpose and reason for, for deploying people like myself uh, into the field. It's, you know, when you start out, I started out, everyone, everyone drills into not just we all have national security clearance, but there's a need to know principle. We really okay. need to know. And so you start getting surveillance. You say, well, what, do I, what, what am I allowed to tell them? And what, what should I not tell them? And, you know, people, other people who are tangentially involved in, in the investigation, should they know who those are? And you realize pretty quick, one, the surveillance know it all anyway. Um, so trying to keep things from them is not is not helpful. Uh, but the more information you give, obviously, they they can provide kind of color around it. You know, um, even things to your point about like if they're meeting with folks, what's that mean? Are they look like they're friendly? Are they is this an adversarial coffee? Like, what you you know, to, to so you say we're interested in this relationship or this activities, um, try and provide much as much guidance as possible. I, I know you guys appreciate it, but it's funny for the from the IO's perspective. Sometimes we were we were guarded because we think you're supposed to be, and you realize that if, if you provide more information, you're going to get more information back. Is that is that your? Do you see that happening with IO's over time? You get a little more understanding about how that works. Absolutely, and, <laughs> and unfortunately, you can make it, fun of us. It's all right. <laughs> so sometimes it takes an event to happen to, to change that mindset. So for example, you know, if, if you're going out and it's going to be a typical day and you're in your mind as a surveillance and, and you, you quickly learn that there's an event or there's something taking place that you should have known about to prepare for, that's oh, yeah. something that is, um, that, you know, the, the investigator will quickly learn that, oh, maybe I should have let them know that this was going to take place because it's one of those things that, you know, um, as a surveillance, you're, you're looking for certain things and, and other things may pique your interest and, and you may do things that, um, uh, you know, you, you may want to pursue something. And, and if you would have known, you would have uh, acted a little differently or you would have done something differently. And that's where it's like that event may have to take place for you to change the mindset of the investigator and say, oh, OK, yeah, I should have let you know and that going forward, I will let you know when certain events are taking place or this is going to happen. So it's, it's a great that's a great point, um, especially I imagine if you know, groups split up or people go different directions to figure out who's who is an importance, you know, what what is actually the game. We I, I think people don't appreciate when I go back to I don't mean to harp on this, how how um, surveillance is a, is a is a resource and it is a, a specific one a dedicated one but also like a rare one we don't you know somebody's in the news they oh why don't we just watch everybody all the time and the amount of, of of resources that would go into watching one person let alone every subject of interest uh of of our national security infrastructure it's you know it's impossible so there's triaging going on every day and there's negotiations going on every day about who gets this valuable resource that is the a surveillance team to go and, and provide information on your on your subject of investigation. And so often, um, it's just you're, you're the, the reason someone gets it is, well, someone's, you know, this is happening. There's an event, there's a meeting, there's a thing. And to not tell you that's why um, would really defeat the purpose of this, of having this this resource like it you know it takes it takes a big team and there's not a lot of teams you know now we can't give away numbers but just there's I mean, it, it intuitively true there would be more uh targets than there would be uh surveillance but okay. yeah it, it's so uh so interesting how is it navigating that getting close enough to see what's going on but far enough away you don't get burned i have to imagine that is just the biggest concern um when you're out in the road, right? Getting getting kind of burned or seen or identified. Ab absolutely. Um, and, and that's something I think that you have to learn. It Again, it, it comes with experience. Uh, when you're newer, um, you know, you're afraid of your own shadow. Every, you know, you're seen all the time. 
um, you quickly learn that, you know, you're allowed to be anywhere at any time. Um, that's the nature of this. And, and that's kind of part of the game. So what's that, tell, tell me about that. That's interesting. What do you mean? You're, you're allowed to be anywhere at all, anytime. <laughs> so, it, well, it's exactly what you were mentioning in, in terms of like, you know, you, you have this comprehension that, you know, your target sees you and, and, oh, I'm being followed. And, I think, you know, if you were to look to see if anyone was following you, you're going to quickly think that everybody's following you. That's <laughs> oh, just the way it is. So it's one of those things where it's like there's always people around and it's just, yeah, you just have to be natural. And again, it's something with experience. You you yes. become more natural and you learn how to fit in and be everywhere with experience. And that being said, you know, um, of course, there's going to be the odd place that you're not going to fit into. But for the most part, you know, um, in most situations, you're, if you're quick to adapt, I think adaptability is one of the key uh, skills that, that, you know, a surveillance needs to have because you just don't know what situation you're going to be in from minute to minute. It, it can change drastically pretty quick. It, it is, uh, I, I think our, we certainly had an expression in the, in the special operations team, which was, it's not weird unless you make it weird. That's right. You know, it doesn't look weird unless you're weird. Yeah, it's precisely. Just, precisely. Yeah. The, same, the same goes with surveillance, right? Like if you're doing something odd or you're, you know, you're hiding and, and you're peeking and doing <laughs> things that like you're going to look out a place. If you're natural and you're, you're supposed to be there and you, you, you own it, that's when you're most successful. Any any close calls or did you any uh, that you feel comfortable talking about or any interesting stories that that come to mind the subject? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there there's been a few. Um, there was there... one in particular. I I won't go into detail on it. Yeah. Um, but there was some. The target did something odd where you don't expect to see that, and it that's when. You yes. really have to be quick on your feet to not react because that's what they want. And if you react, you're giving yourself away. So it's just being, again, yep. being natural and being calm in that situation. And, and again, owning it and having the confidence of your training and your ability to, to fit in. And I think that's how you can avoid those circumstances. But I certainly have been in situations where uh, you, <laughs> you, sure. you're, you're, you're wondering how you're going to get out of that situation at the moment. But even and and even not just like being confronted, and I don't mean you know be confronted, but I imagine there might be cases where afterwards you have to huddle as a group and say, you know, you were seen, or and 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 there be a conversation about that, right? Like, because if the person Absolutely. doesn't let on, is that something that happens regularly where you have to all kind of talk about, okay, well, he did something weird, but but we don't know if it was because of us, and we're gonna like is is. That must happen all the time, right? That's right. Yeah, you want to you want to be able to communicate how your day went and and if something like that occurred because the next time that situation may happen, there may be a reason for it, or there may have been a reason why you were in, put in that situation that what you were uncomfortable and and an oddity occurred. And it, again, it goes to, with that uh, saying of uh, you know communication and from the IO, the the IO may have information okay. that you you know from the, the team prior or whatnot that something oh, occurred, right so just to pass along and know and and advise the people for next time or or, or so on so i well i because i'll tell you i we were um one time when i was my we were on the subway we were on the subway and the person missed their stop their their suspected stop and then they got off and uh got in the train to go back the other way and there was a real conversation about are they you know are they looking are they seeing are they you know did they did they think someone's on them or checking who's on the you know on the on the train both ways but the person was on said no no they just fell asleep so it was you have to have that you know everyone else is going what's happening they missed a stop is they are they trying to you know play go somewhere else play coy and then, you know, you have to rely on the person. No, no, it looks like they, uh, so you have to be close enough to be able to make that assessment. Because otherwise, we would have thought that this person's doing some 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 trade craft or some sort of, uh, and and that kind of ups, you know, that can up a, up a concern, up a level of concern. That's right. Absolutely. And that's something that um, we discuss all the time. And, and 
again, another challenge is, is sometimes you never know. Sometimes things will happen and you'll never know why they happen. And you, you kind of just have to accept it because it's yeah, just, that's a great, it's, yeah. It's just that way, right? It's the nature of the job. It's, it, you know, every day is different and things will happen and you'll never know why sometimes. So, I, That is such a great point. Like there's not uh, the self-doubt too, right? There's not one Absolutely. meeting ever, not one meeting ever walked out of and thought that that was perfect. I asked every question. Yeah. I had no lingering, uh, no lingering questions I wanted to ask. That's what's it. an ideal, so what's an ideal day? Like what do you, what's a, a I would say a fun day or a good day, but like, uh, you like folks that are active, getting around. Like, what, what kind of, I don't know. If someone said, I, it's a, "This is a good, a good day, a bad day," uh, for, th- sure. for folks who are interested in this as a career, like, if I say this is a good day, and they go, "Well, that sounds miserable," <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> absolutely. And, and to be honest, I mean, my good day may be different than somebody yeah, else's, fair, but, fair. but uh, you know, my typical good day would be a little bit of structure early on, and then. I, you know, I loved when it was active. I I love to be moving. Um, When you're moving, it's, you get a bit of an adrenaline rush and a high. And I think that's why people want to pursue a job like this. And I, you know, if if I could pick, I'd be busy every single day. The reality is it's not always like that. Oftentimes, you know, it's, it's the opposite, but um, you know, it really is a roller coaster and, and those highs that adrenaline are, is amazing. And, and yeah, I mean, for me, active, uh, members moving are just fantastic. That, I yeah, love that. Getting out on foot, getting in a car, like moving around, doing things. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It, and how about uh, yeah, drive? Like, do you kind of does the team? Do you kind of look at the team and go, okay, well, this is everyone's strengths, and this is what they can do, or does everyone do all roles in a team? That's a good that's question. I, you know, I think that's something that can change even from team to team. It, it just depends on uh, the make of the team, what, what the task is at hand. Oftentimes, people will have the full skill set. However, there are people that are going to naturally be better at some of the tasks than others. So um, that being said, you know, you want ideally you'd like everybody to be able to do everything just because you don't know who's going to be in a position to um, to acquire the information um, that's required at that time. Uh, however, again, in an ideal situation, you want to have your most talented people that can fulfill that task to the best of their ability in that right position when, when the time comes. But I imagine just the nature of having to get some people closed and back them off, like everyone's got to be able to do everything. You can't have kind of weak links. That's um, right. will be really hard in a team, right? Yeah, and that, that's right. And, and that's where that team mentality comes in. And, you know, you can, you can read a situation oftentimes. And that's where, again, a, a good team player would, would bow down and say, you know, here, go ahead, do this or do that. You, you have that skill set or you have that ability where, you know, you, know, you can see something that's going to happen or take place. Hey, you go ahead. I'm going to stand back on this. And it's sharing that information and communicating. And again, uh, that, that team mentality makes, makes the wheel really turn in, in, in an operation. So for, for skills and experience, for that, as I said, I get a lot of questions uh, about, you know, would I be right? For this, you know, what do I need to, to do to become to, to get the role, to be good at the role? If you're looking at folks who are looking at this as a career and they say, look, can you walk in here, you want to have, you know, either experience or skills doing X, Y, and Z, what would you what would you recommend? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, and again, something that's difficult when you see a job ad, you know, they they have yeah, a lot of no requirements, surveillance but... in the in the geographic region. That's typically all they give you, right? That's so right. driving, and, I can say like driving, confidence in driving. Is it is it observation? Absolutely. I think what number somebody... one, yeah. Sorry to cut you off there. My no, please, a I... little bit. So. <laughs> um, I think I think the driving skill sets number one. I think you have to be a confident, strong, talented driver. Um, again, a lot of that comes with natural ability, but it is something that you can learn as well. Uh, secondly, I think, you know, that natural observation, that, that skill set of being able to see things and notice things uh, that others may not pick up on because a lot can happen really quick in this field and, and it's hard to learn that skill set. So if you have that natural ability, I think you'd be a natural fit for that position. 
Um, thirdly, I mean, we've touched on a lot of these, but a team player, you have to be an extremely strong team player. Um, I, I, I can't stress that enough. You, you're working with other people that depend on you and you have to be there for them. So, so having that skill set is, is fantastic. Um, and, and a great communicator. Um, a lot of the job is relying on communication and it's like you were saying, and, and I can't imagine being in a position, you know, where you were, where you may not have been able to communicate, but you were taking place, taking part in that activity and it, communication's everything. It, it really is because only so many people are seeing that activity, that, that movement at one time. So you're, you're advising other people what's happening. And if you can't communicate that strongly and, and really, um, paint the picture of what's happening it's hard to get everybody else to to understand what's happening in live time while while things are changing to the second so um uh, communication is uh, definitely a key piece of this i think it's it's great i'll forget like the driving piece but you've got to be able to navigate and handle yourself you know behind the wheel in a real way like that's yeah. right and uh, and and that, just to stress on that one, it's um, it's not necessarily in situations that you would like either. I mean, you know, yeah. we we live in a f- four season country, so I mean, the dead of winter, sure. big snowstorm. You you have to know how to handle a vehicle sure. in in some bad weather and be safe, but also be able to fulfill your job as well. And that it it does take a lot so you know there are a lot of aspects that you have to cover um to be successful as a surveillance uh, i'll say too like i spent my you know, career trying to avoid um being seen and, and and uh confrontation and we were always hiding like i'm in a room i'm in a, you know in the coffee shop but the, the confidence you have to have to be a good surveillant to be out in the world to be close to the people that you are investigating, um, I find there's the steeliness that you need that is different from, you know, from an analyst role. Like I always say for IOs, are you comfortable? Are you comfortable knocking on a strange door? Like you think you know who's on the other side of that door. You've done some research on the person you think is going to be opening that door, but you never really know, and that can be a nerve-wracking experience. But it, but it. At least I was able to prepare a little bit and have some idea of what I was. I'm going to go knock on this door and kind of surprise this person uh, and then think on my feet. Whereas you guys are just constantly thinking on your feet when you're out in the world moving around like you're you're not you don't know where that person will be at all at all times. I I imagine that's got to be very stressful. Absolutely. And it's something that you can't necessarily account for either. It's, you know. Uh, we talk about distractions. There's the internal distractions, if you will, that are you uh, know job job related. But there's also those external distractions, and that's you know that's the environment around you, and that environment's changing all the time. And it really depends on where you are, what's happening. I mean, I think most people can imagine how how a day would go and what that would look like. But it's another thing to live it and to have that perspective where it's like you know you're doing a good thing. You're you're out in the community trying to to potentially save lives and, and, and work these national security matters yet other people have uh, a perception or a view of you and, and they don't know who you are and they don't know what you're doing and, and you could potentially be a threat to them. So that part, it, that's an element that, uh, you know, it, it is a stress on you because you, you have to factor that in and, and sometimes have to deal with those uh, circumstances that, you know, you don't necessarily account for when you're, when you're starting your day or going through your day. Getting yelled at, confronted, even not by the person, but just in life. That's why are you parking, right. on, my, why are you parking on my street? That's right. Who are you? That's what are you doing right. here? And and people can be threatened by that, and understandably sure. so, I mean, and, and that's a challenge. And, um, you know, that's, again, with experience, you learn how to um, overcome those, uh, if we call them an obstacle. Uh, but it is an obstacle in your day to to pursue, you know, your your end goal is to deal with some of these other factors that may be happening around you. And again, you're you're in situations where people are not always on the same mindset as you. So you may be dealing with things around you that are could be potentially threatening too at times again. And 
And that's something that you have to deal and work through as you're pursuing your goal, you know, um, yeah, you, doing the task at hand. So you can't lose sight of what you're out there to do and while you're, while you're trying to get this person to stop yelling at you for, 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 you know, that's parking, right. parking in a, in a bad space. That's I'll tell right. you, and I, I told this story in, in the book, but we were out and one of the ways that, that special operations uh, is supported by surveillance. Can, uh, we often you know, need people to be a perimeter security and look around, make sure no one kind of sneaks up on us. And I, I told the story that uh, late at night we were working and, and um, someone was, was going to be driving uh, and like driving right up on us. And you know, the surveillance pulled their car out to stop this person like doing a, a super slow, like first jerk, you know, jerked out. And, and it, it was late at night that if they had been a drunk driver, if it had been somebody who was not paying attention, you know, that could have gone really badly. Thankfully it didn't proceeded to do an extremely slow, you know, U-turn three point turn to block the street. So this person's kind of coming down the street. We're working in a, in a house and they're like, just gently blocking this car so that we could do our job all the while, you know, somebody's freaking out of them and they're pretending like they're struggling behind the wheel. Um, you have a bit of a role. Sometimes even if you're surveilling, you think I'm just you know, sitting back watching. It can be an active, like it, it might be more active than some people think it is. Um, and, and I said, that was, uh, I, I saw that very close and up and, uh, I'm just always very appreciative, and, and I believe that team never let me hear the end of it um, because they saved our butts. But uh, it, it, you know, it has that excitement too. I'm sure not all the time. It's got to be some some days where you know that person doesn't move, and it's going to be a long day. Does that does that happen too? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. I mean, you get both sides of it, and I think I use the analogy of the roller coaster, but it is true. I mean. When, when when your target's not moving, um, it can be extremely stressful and hard on on you, you mentally, physically, sitting around in a vehicle. It, it's not the most fun thing in the world when you're not moving. It, it, it can be a lot, especially if you have to pay attention. Um, it's not an easy thing to do. But like I say, the, those those highs and those active times really do offset that those lows. So that's where, um, you know, that's the driver. That's why you do what you do. Um, but it's part of the job, right? It's those slow times. It's it, it's part of doing business, right? So it's not bad to have a quiet day, you know. That's it. All, <laughs> That's it. Get all my time, punch in, punch out, make <laughs> dinner. Don't don't upset anybody. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so how's it changed? Like you know, I know you're doing more on the off the road and, and doing some on the the ocean side. How is can you if, can you speak to how surveillance has changed since when you started to to now? I, I think about you know, we used to do stuff in people's driveways, and that was before everyone had a ring doorbell camera. Yeah, like I can't imagine you know walking down some street late at night and having just everyone's doorbell pinging, you know, um, pinging alerts. Like how 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 have things changed? Have you seen that even on the on the on the you know, not to give anything away, but I'm I'm curious your thoughts. Sure. Yeah. I mean. From an OSIN perspective, especially, I mean, as, as much as, um, you know, technology is changing when it comes to the challenging side of, of uh, completing your tasks or your operations, um, you know, from an OSIN perspective, I also have a greater ability to, to seek out some of those things that may be challenging to you as, uh, you know, the operator. I may be able to identify that uh, ring doorbell ahead of time via a Google Streets view or something like that. I don't even have to go down the street and I'll know that's there. So as much as technology can be hindering when it comes to operations, you know, from, from your side of the house, um, from that OSINT perspective, we're also advancing and, and learning different techniques to identify challenges ahead of time as well. So, uh, you know, everything's kind of complementary in that sense where the field's always advancing and, and it's kind of that game of cat and mouse. And I think, you know, as technology is going to hinder, I think it's also going to help. So, um, yeah, I do see a lot of advantages from my perspective, at least on on how to assist that surveillance team. And I think, again, when when it comes to information, I think, you know, with these platforms and with with how active uh, most of the community is on these social media platforms, uh, you know, sometimes you do get a heads up of what may be happening or you can do things ahead of time. Yeah. 
utilizing open sources to to know what you're going to get into. Almost like lot like figuring what how oh what's going to happen in my day. You can get pretty up to date information to to do some pre planning by people's online activity. Uh, very interesting because you wouldn't have that before. That's um, right. Either you know, I, that's it, right. Yeah, it, it, it must be tough. Like I mean, there there was always those you know uh, suburban streets where if you put a car on it, people walk out immediately and say, "What are you doing?" You know, everyone's got a four car driveway. See, so you, you were always navigating that. That's um, right. But it's it, 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 it's interesting. So yeah, any other ways like that um, to to the to the surveillance officers of the future? Um, how you see like we'll, we'll always need. I assume we'll always need people who get up close, feel comfortable going, watching watching folks. Um, but would they need to be more technically savvy as well to use the kind of tools that are going out or understand how those tools are being used? Yeah, I, I believe so. I, I, I strongly believe so. I think more and more you're seeing, I don't want to call it a surveillance state, but there's cameras everywhere now. So you really yeah. have to be conscious of, of where you are, what's going on and, and what you're doing. Because at the end of the day, you know, <laughs> there's that term, you know, there's always someone watching and it, it can be counter to what you're trying to do as well, because there could be somebody watching and it may not be physically in front of you. It could be a camera, it could be something and oh, they could be seeing yeah. what you're doing. Right. So from a surveillance perspective, yes, you would absolutely have to be aware of that and, and know that that's quite possible. Yeah. And so you got to be worried about being caught. Yeah. I'm, we were always, right. but, but even more uh, yourselves, how about how you work, any differences between, between the service, like law enforcement? Do you ever kind of bump up against? Is it funny running to people on the road? Do you ever have where your where your people are? You know, Wait a second, you're parked in the spot where I would be parked if I was there surveillance watching this guy. Does that does that happen? Andrew, it never ends to this day. <laughs> I, I see people and I'm like, I'll tell my wife, I'm like, oh, that's a surveillance. I can I can guarantee you it's a surveillance. And you know, sure enough, there's a guy sitting in the car. I'm like, it has to be. And you know, and I and even you know, movements, things like that. There's, there's certain indicators that you can pick up on. And I mean, when you know it and you know what you're looking for and you've, you're conditioned for that, I think it's easier to, to notice. Absolutely. But how is it when you, because one of the things that I, I tell people about the service is that, you know, we, some people can be on the radar of CSIS, but also under law enforcement, you know, we have to run parallel investigations. And that was yeah. a concern um, on our side, but how is that as a challenge to actually be on the ground? Like, would you, have you ever bumped up against like I guess surveillance watching you're out there with the, with the guys in the street and and it's you're watching the same guy does that ha does that happen it, it happens more than you know and it, it it can be challenging because sure like how that must be tough because we're never the, they're the primary right they, they get they get well, the good they get the good spots right that's right and and they ha they're running parallel right so they may not know everything you know and you not may not know everything they know and I, you know I've seen things where you question how much they do know because they may be in a spot where you're saying why are you doing that right now and you know again you can pick up who these people are and you're saying well why are you why are you doing that i you know this is happening yeah. over here and you're you're doing this it's Interesting. So, absolutely so, yeah no there's i'm so they must be they must hate you guys the way they hate uh law enforcement because they because they all know that we know a little more we can't share typically That's not right. to upset law enforcement uh, there are rules and reasons why information sharing is limited. Uh, right. At this, at the same time, they would often want to have the information that that, that we have. Um, so right. deconfliction de deconfliction happens on the road. There's a lot of uh, really, they, and they there's been a lot of good things that have come from it as well. Like it's identifying people, and and um, you know, if, if you're in a position where you can speak with them, um, you know, sometimes you do get insight into things that may be going on in your, again, in your environment that, yeah. you know, it, it's good to know at that time. So, um, again, you know, I can't speak more highly of the partner agencies. They're, they're extremely um, good with us at a working level, especially um, when it comes to circumstances like that. They, they do a great job passing along, especially pertinent information that may be critical for your job. Let's there's got to be some camaraderie, right, among folks uh, who've done the, the job, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> every, everybody's always got a story or stories. And, you know, um, Back in there's, my day. There's, there's always personality. That's right. That's right. So, you know, I, I think I think you take it there where you're 
you know, maybe you're going to one up your story or, or whatnot. And, uh-huh. oh, you know, I, I got to do this or I was the one that had the ability to do that. And, you know, uh, when it comes to the actual job, I think, you know, that that team effort is always number one. And I, I don't think anybody would be selfish to do something more than someone else. But, you know, um, after you may hear about it and say, hey, you know what, I was the guy that saw that and, and I did that. So that's kind of where that camaraderie uh, is seen more often, more so. And, and I, I have just talking to you now, I have a question, and I'm not sure how much we can we can chat about this, but but even on the it was interesting you say about being aware of being recorded and being monitored, um, something I was always concerned about, you know, being rec- walking up to someone's house and having them record my conversation or video me and put me on YouTube. And uh, that has to be a real challenge for for the, the teams going out there and, and communicating um and i don't want to talk about how you do it but is that is that becoming an increasing um issue about like uh yeah being being surveilled being monitored communication monitored um yeah that must be a, a, a challenge to navigate increasing challenge to navigate yeah i you know i think I may I may revisit my statement from earlier, but I mean, as technology is enhanced, I think you have other means of communication that you can use that that sometimes you aren't as obvious with those communications in places where you can't necessarily communicate. So yeah, yeah. you you can often find times and you know where where there's a will, there's a way. So um, you know we can go back to to methodology from the past if we have to. Sure. Do you think yeah. that? Yeah, you know, like it's one of those things where it, it just depends on the circumstance and, and your location. And um, again, communication, it, there's, you know, if, if you find yourself or you're going to be in a tight spot, it, as long as you communicate that, everyone is willing to adapt to help you out one way or another so that the rest of the communication can go smooth. So I know I danced around that a little bit, but... No, um, I, and I, I don't want to get into like, you know, how we do things and trade craft and things that's like right. that. But I just... I just look at the challenges, you know, that the current intelligence officer is dealing with as far as their connectivity and how technology can be used against all of us. And, you know, putting something away to go and do something for an hour is 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 a, a one solution. But when you have to be connected with your team to do your jobs, you know, I think that's... A, that would be tough and increasingly difficult to make sure that you're, you're staying ahead of it. Uh, I hadn't really thought about that from 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 your perspective. I see it from from the other IOs perspective about how that impacts their life and their operational security. And I imagine they're constantly trying to figure out how that impacts on yours. Um, so, yeah, uh, anyway, I, I don't know if we have any questions. I just look at I, 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 I dipped in the chat here. I have questions here and and I um you know happy to happy to answer any who who do while we while we have you. It's this is great. You know, it's a world I'm familiar with, but I get it in short and small doses. I don't think I could do it. Um, <laughs> it's the stress, the stress of it, the physicality of it, um, the unknown the unknown na- nature of what every day I said I I gen- generally got to plan my week. Yeah. So I would say, okay, well, I'm going to go knock on this person's door on Tuesday night because it's going to rain and I want a car. <laughs> you know, like I, uh, and I'm going to go try and do this. And on Friday, I come to the office. I'm going to write up all my reports, and yeah. then we'll probably, yeah. have, we'll probably have a drink, you know, after uh, on Friday afternoon. So I want to be around for that. Versus yeah. you guys, who you you never you never quite know, right? That's right. And and again, um, it's one of those careers where early on, when you're young, it, it's a yeah. lot age you're a lot more flexible it does take a toll when you when you throw a family into the mix where um you know you you know how the commitment level goes right like there's times where you may not make certain events or or, uh things like that and and you know i've i i think we can all say we've sacrificed one way or another at times um where again a typical job you may be able to to do and attend those events so it's one of those things where um it, it it's it comes with a job and it's one of those things you have to be aware of as as you go into it and know that that may be the case do you tell people where you work like did you did you have uh i don't want to you know get into uh too much but was it like me out of government and change the subject or is that 
How did you navigate? Oh, maybe let me ask you a broader a, a broader question. It was just how did you navigate having this very challenging, secretive? You know, it's not a, it's, it's not a secret organization. It's an organization with secrets, but we don't. You know, we try to be discreet. Discretion, discretion, discretion is always uh, the word. Um, so how did you navigate that kind of life? Well, it's funny. Try meeting your wife. And, yeah. and working at the service. It's one yeah. of those things where, you know, for the first while she had, I I couldn't even tell you where I worked at that time, but it's yeah. one of those things where you're not going to quickly disclose what you do, who you are, what, what you're yeah. doing day to day. Um, that honestly, that's one of the biggest challenges of the job, especially that part of the job. Yeah. I think, I think other roles you, you can um, potentially disclose or, or, indicate what you may be doing not what you're doing but um you know that you represent the service but when it comes to something more covert like surveillance yeah um, you got to be super covert like you really got to be covert that's right that's right and it, again it's one of those things where in your personal life it, it's extremely difficult you you avoid you you pick a, a a subject matter that you just change the topic and yeah no i do i do this something boring and, and you yep. just cut yeah. off and even your friends don't necessarily know. It's one of those things where it, it's challenging. And again, it's one of those things that you have to account for when you get into that profession. It, every job has challenges. And it's a very unique challenge where it is. Uh, it, it made me want to avoid going out and seeing anybody that I knew from growing up. Because uh, I was working in and living in the city that I grew up in. So every time I go out to see people and ask me what I did, I hated lying uh, to folks. And so it doesn't feel good and you find you're more open. And, uh, and so you try, I try to avoid it and you have to be covert, covert. Cause if people saw in you public, you, you're probably working. Oh, that's uh, right. Well, imagine yeah. running into friends and being in situations where you're working and, and you see friends and you have to act natural to the job with friends and, and it's happened before. And, and sure. um, it's one of those things where you have to balance everything. And, and sometimes you just have to, you know, the job comes first in those circumstances. Hey, yes. Oh, hey, how's it going? You know, I, I got to get moving here. I'm in a hurry or something, you know, and uh, it's great until you're not in a hurry and, and then you're stuck in that area. But, you know, it can help as well, too. It is, again, just getting back to being natural in, in your environment. That's what it's all about. It, a quick uh, question here on, is there a difference between each region and, and the way they and when they the way they operate, I don't know if there'd be a difference in the region how they operate, but maybe just the challenges of being in a very spread out region and a very downtown yeah. region. Yeah, it... I think. Yeah, I think you touched on this earlier when uh, right at the start. You know, uh, the traffic and that kind of thing. Imagine being in some of these places where you have to commute out. Like maybe your region is is massive in proximity, so maybe you have to travel multiple sure. hours to get to your destination. Like those are things that factor in where, you know, the GTA is relatively a large, uh, lar right. large area, but I mean, um, you know, different parts of the country, there, there's proximity to challenges and that kind of thing as well. Well, there's so many people you can blend in. Whereas if you're in some, some area where there's not a lot of cars, not a lot of people, and you're going to fall someone over a long distance. Yeah. And it happens and it happens more than, you know, and it's, it, again, it's a challenge. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Well, look, I, uh, really appreciate uh, your uh, time today. And I said, I'm going to, when I get questions, I say, Hey, we got, a, we got a, a video that'll answer uh, some of those because it, it, it's, I can't stress this enough, a, a very unique, challenging role that I don't think gets a lot of uh, attention or the respect it deserves. Like I was, Coverty, coverty, a couple times. Like when you do an operation, and it's, maybe it's a few minutes, right? But doing, doing every day, being in the public, trying to operate discreetly, and that's your job, is a whole other level um, yeah. than going, leaving the office, getting a car, going to have coffee, and then coming home. You know, whereas yeah. eight hours like rolling around um, yeah. with a team and all that. So yeah, thanks for the thanks for the insight and the and the input. No problem. Thank you for having me. This is great. Yeah. Anything else you want to tell people? I, I, uh, anything else to, to say? I don't want to uh, give you the opportunity to anything I missed yeah, to no. ask. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, uh, overall, like if you're interested in the career, I, I highly recommend it. It's very rewarding. Um, again, it's that roller coaster, but I, and I hope I didn't scare anybody away from, <laughs> from pursuing <laughs> That's all right. the job, uh, but, um, uh, 
it's, it's a great it's a great organization. I, I can't speak more highly of the organization and uh, the position that great, fantastic people. I, I always say never here to talk anybody into or out of the career, just trying right. to prepare people for it and then make them better if they if they if they if they get it. So I imagine driving courses quickly, like uh, take some take some people are asking tips uh, for courses, take some driving courses, get on a get on a road and 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 spin out a few times, get some confidence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, honestly, like there, there, as I had mentioned, there are some surveillance and security courses out there these days. Um, cool. and, and just, you know, do your research and, and understand, you know, what, and attending something like this is huge because, you know, you get that perspective and I think knowledge is key in power. And I think if you have a better understanding of what it takes to do the job, you can kind of uh, train yourself and, and learn different uh, skill sets that are going to make you a better candidate if you want to pursue this position. That's great. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's no great problem. seeing you. Good seeing you too, buddy. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. We'll speak. We'll speak soon. Thanks everyone for coming out uh, and we'll see you in, uh, in a few months, but always reach out questions, concerns. Uh, that's what it's all about. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Andrew. Take care. Bye, buddy. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone. Bye.